Amen, Father God. I just thank you, Lord, so much for everything that you've given us, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word is standing true. I thank you that nothing in your word has changed and that you are the same today, yesterday, and forever. You are our God and you give us every good and perfect gift. It comes down from you, the Father of lights, who there's no variableness or shadow of turning. And you, Jesus Christ, are the same today, yesterday, and forever. This is the answer to the Supreme Court's decision to allow same-sex marriage. We know that God has given us the institution of marriage because he wanted us to be able to have family that we can teach our children about him and we can teach our children the right thing to do. Now they have allowed same-sex marriage, which is an abomination before God. In Leviticus chapter 18, verses 13 to 15, you could read it for yourself. And then also in Leviticus chapter 20, verses 22 to 23, you can read that God hates these things. These are the things that God hates. It's an abomination before him. An abomination means a detestable thing, a thing that's abhorred. And God does know that this is the thing that can ruin a society. And because this can ruin a society, that means that there won't be any family members being born because it'll be men with men and women with women. 1 Timothy 1.10 also tells us that those that defile themselves with mankind. And also, it talks about men stealers, slavery, things of that nature, anything that is against mankind. God hates it, and it is an abomination. Now, there are many Christians out here, they do double talk. They talk out of this side of their mouth and that side of their mouth because they don't know which side of the fence they're on. They're double-minded. How it says in the book of James, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And then Jesus Christ himself says that if you are lukewarm, he will spew you out of his mouth. So you need to be able to pick a side of the fence. I've heard conversation of Christians turning their profile on Facebook into rainbows. You guys are a bunch of hypocrites, liars, and fakes. You don't even know which side of the fence you're on. Marcus Rogers, this one is for you. We need to stand strong for the institution of marriage because God has given us that because he loves us. God has given us that in order that we may have family. God has given us that for the procreation of the human race that we can continue on and be able to teach our children the right things. We know that there is no family members born from two men. Two men having sex, it's not two men having sex, it's called sodomy. And then also, God is angry with the wicked every day. Psalm 711, that proves it. And then also, it proves that God hates the sin of homosexuality. And he hates homosexuals. I don't hate homosexuals, but God does. Because it's an abomination before him, a detestable thing. Look it up for yourself in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, in the book of Leviticus chapter 20, 1 Timothy 1.10, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 speaks of those that will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those that are effeminate or homosexuals will not receive the kingdom of God. And then they have this thing going around talking about everybody is God's children. That is a lie from the pit of hell. John chapter 8 where Jesus is having a conversation with the scribes and Pharisees and he says to them, ye are of your father the devil and you do his works. That's just like the Supreme Court. They're doing the works of the devil. Anybody that agrees with this type of lifestyle and this way of life is in agreement with the devil. And it also says in the word of God, to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. And anyone that can side with this decision and anyone that can agree with this thing because they claim that they love. You don't even know what love is. God is love. Colossians 3.5 says, talks about inordinate affection. We have affection that's misplaced. We think that we're loving, but really we're hurting. We're hurting each other. We're hurting the children. That's just like they had on a commercial the other day a story where Jimmy Kimmel was on his show and they're teaching and asking kids about same-sex marriage. What does children know about same-sex marriage? Children only know what we teach them. And if we're teaching them the wrong thing, they'll be just as corrupt as the Supreme Court that has made a corrupt decision in order to allow two men and two women to be together. How disgusting, how detestable. Before God, it is an abomination. They want to do things like change the Bible. They have a new Bible out called the Queen James Bible. Who 
would want to purchase that Bible. A complete doctrine has been removed out of the Bible. You can read it and there won't be any conviction of homosexuality. There won't be any conviction of homosexual sin. So if you don't want to be convicted of that kind of sin, you go ahead and purchase that Bible. And then the enemy is completely attacking the foundation. If he can attack the foundation, which is the word of God, then he can bring down the rest of the building. There are many Christians nowadays that this is all they do is give the Lord lip service. Their mouths are over there where Jesus are, but their hearts are somewhere else deep in the world. This is the story of many Christians. And now the line has been drawn in the sand. Those are who those who are for Jesus and those who are for themselves and for the world. Just like I said before, if you're a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. That's in the word of God. Now I've decided that I'm going to follow Jesus. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And there are so many Christians that waver between two opinions, their own and then the opinions of demons. How long will you do that? If God be God, then serve him. Because we know that the devil is a God and there are people that are serving him. Which side of the fence are you on? Which side of the fence will you end up on? We have Sodom and Gomorrah as a testament to us that God hates homosexuals and that he hates homosexual sin and it's proven that he hates those things because Sodom and Gomorrah is given to us as an example that God did judge sin and he will judge sin. Jude verse 7. Read it for yourself. Don't just take it from me. And then there's these Christians that they claim that they love God. They never pick up his word. They never read it. They never hide the word of God in their heart that they may not sin against him because God has commanded us in his word. Thou has commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. And then also God says in the book of Hebrews that if we diligently seek him, that he would reward us. And that reward is that he would show up in our lives in a magnificent and mighty way. But for those that are seeking him and that are seeking him diligently, that their hearts are not divided with what the truth is and what the truth should be. We know that the truth is found in Jesus because Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Now, if there's anyone living in that lifestyle, God wants to save you. For God does so love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then it also says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. And then those that don't believe on Jesus, I'm not judging you. This message isn't judging you. You're judged already because Jesus says, if you have not the son, you have not life, but the wrath of God abideth on you. God will judge sin. Psalm 11, 7, 11 says, God is angry with the wicked every day. So each day a person wakes up and they're living in that lifestyle. Each day a person wakes up and they're continuing in that lifestyle. Each day a person says that this is love, but really it's inordinate affection and how it tells us over in Romans chapter one that it's vile affection and that God has given them over to reprobate minds, meaning that their minds are no good for anything good and that they can only be given over to evil. And then it also says, also in Romans chapter 1, that anyone that agrees with this type of behavior, that they get the same reward that those who participate in these things. So you go ahead, fake Christian, and claim that you love God. Fake Christian, you hypocrite. Jesus called people hypocrites because he had to call them like he see them. And I'm calling them like I'm seeing them too. There's many churches that's on the side of the world because they want to please man instead of pleasing God. Be accepted of the Lord and forget the world. Leave it behind because the world is filled with corruption. We as Christians must stand up for what is true, for what is right, for what is good for what is acceptable before God, because we must continue to pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts is acceptable in his sight. God is not begging anyone to be saved. He's not putting people in headlocks and dragging them into heaven, but those who have heard Jesus' voice and will respond in kind when God is able to give you a little bit of light and you respond, God increases that light and it turns from a pen light to a spotlight to the starlight, to moonlight, to the sunlight, and then eventually you're in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ.
I want to stand strong for what Jesus has given me, and that is the truth. I want to believe everything that he has said in his word and not believing these new fake Bibles that they have out where the devil is placing doubts in the minds of Christians by saying, has God said? A lot of these new Bibles don't even exalt Jesus Christ, and this is why they have allowed Jesus and God to be kicked out of our schools, and they've invited in homosexuals teaching our children about homosexuality acceptance and sodomy yes that's what's going on in our schools now you've allowed it to happen America we had this country founded on the things that God has given us and we hope that God would bless us well you know what this is not a blessed nation and if God doesn't judge America he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah because we have gone completely sideways and we don't even know that the day is day and that the night is night we don't even know to call evil evil and wrong wrong and right right we have decided to take our own way and that way is the wrong way because God knows the way of a righteous man and a righteous man God takes care of him along that way and the way that America is going is incorrect it is wrong and we will be judged as I said before in this message the line has been drawn in the sand those who are for Jesus and those who hate him and there are many that hate God because they don't like to retain God in their minds because they know that judgment is looming judgment is coming because our God is God those things that look impossible to him is not impossible with him because he's God now if there's anyone in that lifestyle God can change you because how it tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, it says in verse 10, such were some of you that we were thieves, that we were homosexuals, that we were liars, that we were murderers, but God has redeemed us from those things. Open your heart now. Pay attention. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear because this is the truth. There are many people that follow their pernicious ways and lies because this is what pleases them and they want to please the world. Well, I only seek to please God and my Lord Jesus Christ because he is true. He is God. This world is only temporary. Jesus says that not one tittle or dot from his law shall pass away until all has been fulfilled. We are living in the days where God is about to judge sin. We are living in the days where the line has been drawn in the sand. Those who are for Jesus and those who hate him. Those who hate him agree with what the world is saying. They agree with what the world is doing. They have no problem with what is going on. They're not able to call evil evil and good good whenever they're able to see it because they have not the spirit of God and if you have not the spirit of God in Romans chapter 8 it tells us you are none of his now I want to appeal to those who are watching this message if you feel judged it is the conviction of the Holy Spirit it is not I because Jesus says that any of you that are caught in these kinds of sin if you do not repent you will likewise perish this is the message. The kingdom of God is at hand. This is the truth. You either receive it or you don't. God loves his creation and everybody does not belong to him. Romans chapter 8 or John chapter 8 where Jesus is having a conversation with the scribes and Pharisees where he accused them and said of them, ye are of your father the devil. All of you Christians that are hypocrites fakes and frauds, afraid to call a lie a lie and the truth the truth. Repent now while you have time. Speak the truth. And if you're speaking the truth, you are speaking it in love. Jesus told us about hell. And because he told us about hell, that proves his love for us. Because yet while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because he died for us, we are able to have a relationship with God and to know who he is. Repent of this evil of what you are doing in your heart, Christian, if you have not received the truth. You might as well take 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 out of the Bible. You might as well take Leviticus chapter 18 and chapter 20 out of the Bible. You might as well take 1 Corinthians, 1 Timothy 1, 10 out of the Bible. You might as well take all those things out of the Bible and then you can satisfy your own heart because there won't be any conviction of sin. If you believe the word of God, you believe all the word of God. This is not a smorgasbord. This is not a time for you to give 
answers for yourself this is not a time for you to pick and choose those things that are approved of you and that you approved of and that are good to you and that you're ready to receive but Jesus Christ encourages us to take aside you are for him or you're for the world if you agree with this decision that the Supreme Court has made then you agree with the world if you don't agree with the world, if you don't agree with Jesus, then you in, in with the Jesus. If you're if you're in with the world, then that means that you hate Jesus. If you hate Jesus, then that means that you have the wrath of God upon you and you will be judged. We have Sodom and Gomorrah as a testimony to us that God hates sin. God hates homosexual sin. This is the reason why he destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at the evidence for yourself. Judgment is coming. The time will come when those who know Jesus will be called out of their graves and those that are alive will be caught up and we will forever be with the Lord. And then when Jesus returns, he won't be coming as the loving Savior. He'll be coming as the judge, bringing his reward with him for those that hate him. May the Lord add a blessing to this message. May those that are hearing this message receive it in love and receive it as the truth scriptures that I've spoken about look it up for yourself don't be like everybody in the world just going with the flow be like the Bereans out of Acts chapter 17 11 where they searched the scriptures night and day to see whether these things were true is what the Apostle Paul was telling them I would expect the same for you that you have the Word of God there was a time in the book of Amos when there was a famine of the Word of God and we have it plentiful there are hundreds of translations of, of the Bible. They all can't be the Word of God. As I said before, if you want to bring down the building, you begin to work on the foundation. And the foundation of truth, the foundation of God's Word has been weakened in these last days. And there are many Christians that are going for it, like the new translations. They trust them and they believe it. And they say, oh, well, God's word is easier to understand. I didn't know that God's word was hard to understand, seeing that we had the King James Bible for over 400 years. It has been tried and tested and true that it is the word of God. It is God's inspired word to the English speaking world in English. The King James Bible has been translated out of English into 776 other tongues and languages proving that this Bible has stood the test of time if you want to profess yourself to be wise you really are a fool and then it also says in the Word of God the interest of thy word giveth light it giveth understanding to the simple if you respond to the little bit of light that the Lord has given you he will reward you by giving you more light those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth and God will have no other way than that I want to encourage you to seek the truth that can only be found in Jesus because God loves his creation. He has his children and the devil has his. You are either for Jesus or against him. Remember, if you are lukewarm, Jesus will spew you out of his mouth. May the Lord add a blessing to this message and to those that are seeking the truth. Thank you, Lord. Amen.